After doing a rear disc conversion on the CRX, it kind of left the front end a little bit lacking. So I decided, why the hell not? Let's just put a big brake kit on it. So let's just tear the front brakes off the car. I'm not really going to go into details about this because if you can't take your front brakes off, you probably shouldn't be putting a big brake kit on your car. Something I want to point out here is that I did this wheel bearing about a year ago and once I was done I sandblasted the hub and I sprayed the hub with fluid film. So as you can see I used brake parts cleaner and the fluid film came right off but underneath it that hub looks like it was just freshly sandblasted. It looks absolutely perfect and this time I'm just using the CRC. It's going to do the same exact thing. It's going to protect it from corrosion. Here I am cleaning the tabs of where the caliper bracket is going to mount up so you want to keep this nice and clean and as flat as possible. I'm going to be using the CRC a lot in this video. You could never have too much corrosion protection. The two short bolts are going to go on the caliper bracket right here. They want you to use two washers just like I showed you. And there's going to be a aluminum sleeve which pops right into the knuckle just like this. It's basically just a spacer since the bolt is a smaller diameter than the factory bolt. So yeah, just like that, put the spacer in and make sure you put the two washers on the back side because if not, the bolt's going to stick out too far and could possibly come in contact with the rotor which you don't want. At this point I'm just using my ratchet to snug everything down. There's no need to torque or tighten it down because all of it's going to have to come back apart again. It's time to assemble the two piece rotor and the instructions actually say to use red thread locker but I'm going to use blue thread locker instead. I do recommend you follow the instructions. This is just a personal choice of mine. So what I'm using here is the hub to actually hold the hat of the rotor on the hub and I'm going to use all of this to get things started. You can see I have everything on here backwards because the bolts have to come in from the back side of the rotor. So I hope all of that makes sense. I'm just going to go ahead and run all of the screws down right now just so everything's nice and snug. And then we're going to come back with our torque wrench and get all of this nice and tightened up. I'm using one of the lug nuts to hold down the hat as you can see and I'm putting a screwdriver in here just to counteract the torque wrench as I tighten everything down. And of course you don't want to forget to clean your new rotor because they do have oils on them. So you could just use brake parts cleaner like I'm using here or just soap and water. Now I'm not sure if these bolts are stainless. I really don't know. Really don't care. They're getting some corrosion protection. Now it's time to test fit the caliper for the first time and this one takes the longer bolt that I mentioned before. The short one goes on a bracket, the long one goes on the caliper. Now this long one for the caliper only takes one washer. So we're going to go ahead and install this and of course we're just going to snug it down just so we could test and see how the fitment is. With the caliper all snug down we could go ahead and remove the large cotter pin and right off the bat you could already see that the distance on the right side of the rotor is much smaller than the left side and if I try to fit a brake pad inside of here you're going to see that the left side goes 
in without any issues at all and you would have a difficult time trying to fit in a brake pad on the right side so what that means is we have to use the shims that were supplied in the kit to go ahead and shim the caliper over on the bracket so i hope that makes sense and i'll show you exactly what i'm doing right now And here goes those shims I was talking about. There's more than enough of them supplied inside of the kit. And this is going to give you that fine adjustment so you can move the caliper over in the direction that you need it to move. We're going to go ahead and loosen both of the caliper bolts, but we're only going to remove the top one. And just as a baseline, I decided to start off with three shims. It's just a random number that I chose. And I'm doing the top one first, as you can see. And then go ahead and repeat the same process for the lower bolt. Again, another three shims. We're going to snug it back up once again and see where it's at now. As you can see the shims already made a difference i could now fit a brake pad on the right side of this rotor but on the left side the pad goes in but it is really tight so it's not quite right just yet i think what we're gonna have to do is re-shim it one more time instead of three shims i think we're gonna go ahead and only use two and i think that's gonna be the magic number here so let me go ahead and do that real fast now i have two shims on each bolt and the caliper is nice and snug so let's go ahead and fit the brake pads one more time. You can see the right brake pad goes in just perfect. And there's just the right amount of play. So let's try the left one. And again, it goes in nice and smooth. And if you wiggle the brake pads back and forth, you can hear that they have just about the same amount of play, which is what you really want to hear. So now we could go ahead and torque down uh, the bolts after, of course, you put thread locker on them. Again, the instructions say to put red thread locker on all of the bolts. And again, I'm using blue thread locker. Just a personal choice of mine, but please follow the instructions. Don't forget to pick up a set of braided lines because these lines are not included with the kit so you are going to have to buy them separate. Here I have the other caliper that's going to go on the other side of the car and I'm just using it as an example. Here's this fitting that's included in the brake line kit and I'm just going to put a little bit of paste on here. You don't want to go crazy with it and definitely do not get it inside of the caliper itself. Once we get this on here, we're going to go ahead and keep turning it with a wrench. It's going to get to a point where it just feels nice and snug and it doesn't really want to turn anymore. But you also got to be aware that you want the fitting facing upward because that's how the brake line is going to connect to it. Now it's time to disconnect the original brake hose off of the car. And I highly recommend using a set of flare nut wrenches here. It's going to reduce your chances of rounding off the fittings here and just makes your life so much easier. So now we can go ahead and attach this side. Nothing is getting torqued down at this point. We're just kind of mocking everything up and getting everything in its place. Remove this uh, locking pin and uh, pull out the original brake hose. You can see everything has like that yellow tint and it's because previously I sprayed CRC on it. And as you can see, it looks nice and perfect. I went ahead and screwed on that first piece that was supplied in the kit. And I'm actually going to screw on the line from the bottom. And let's put the retainer clip back in it. And I know this is not how you use a hammer, but with the camera and light in the way, I did not have much space for swinging a hammer. And it is beyond me why this kit is using standard sizes. Why isn't it metric? I have no idea. Like I said, it's beyond me. It baffles me on why they're using standard sizes. So make sure you have a set of standard wrenches. <laughs> and of course, make sure you get out your calibrated wrenches for that uh, accurate torque.
Now that I have the brake lines nice and tight, it's time to actually bleed the system to get all of the air out of it. You're gonna notice that these calipers have four bleed valves on them and the only ones we're gonna touch are the two on top. Do not touch the ones at the bottom because we're trying to get air out of the system and air rises whenever it's in fluid. So it makes sense, right? Here I'm using my vacuum pump to kind of suck the air out of the system. Just a nice tool that I have because I do a lot of brake jobs. So something like this really helps me, but you could easily get this done if you put a rubber hose on uh, the bleed valve right here and into a small jar or a container and you could actually just get in the car and pump the brake pedal yourself or even better, you could have a friend help you. I'm not gonna get into too much detail about this because there's a ton of videos on YouTube on how to bleed your brakes. Now it's time to turn the engine on and push the brake pedal a few times and hold a good amount of pressure on the brake pedal. The whole point of this is to check for leaks. If you can hold a ton of pressure on your brake pedal and you don't see any leaks then the system's going to be completely fine. In my case I came outside and I did see a leak at the back of the caliper right where we have that L shaped fitting. So all I did was give it another full 360 turn and snugged it down even more and that took care of my leak. Now I have to figure out how to retain the brake line on the car because you can't have it just bouncing around and rubbing on things. It might cause a brake failure in the future. So I decided to remove this bracket off of the original brake hose. You can see how I used it to try to retain the braided brake line. But I think I still need a different solution for this. What's funny is that part number I gave you guys for the braided brake line kit. If you go on Google and type it up you'll see that the kit is supposed to include brackets to mount it on your car but those brackets simply weren't included in my kit I double checked and they're just not there And there goes my big reveal of what rims I'm using. Uh, the tires are the Kumo SV730. Yes, they are some sticky tires and it's not recommended for a daily driver, but this is not a daily driver. Before we move on, I want to talk about this product from EK Prince. He has this logo right here on it. It's a 3D printed part. I found this guy on Facebook Messenger and it converts your turn signal into a functional air duct so you could get air to like a oil cooler or something like that you could get two different sizes whichever one you want to pick a 2.5 inch outlet or a three inch it's a really nice part the fit and finish looks absolutely amazing and it's just one of those things where you think okay a 3d printed part it may not look right on a car but once you put it on the car it just completely disappears it looks super clean and look at that connector it plugs right into the factory connector you can can't ask for anything more it is 100% plug and play you could get it with or without the turn signal LED and of course so I could keep my car legal on the road I need a turn signal and this thing it's amazing I have no plans of using the air duct for any functionality at this point but I bought it because I love the way it looks and no this is not sponsored or anything like that this guy did not know that I have a YouTube channel I bought this for my own cash and I just asked him if I could include it in one of my videos you got to support people who are doing this who are making things like this for the CRX because nobody else is making them so go show the guys some support I'll see if I can find a link and I'll put it in the description Before I close out this video, I want to mention one of my followers on Instagram. His tag is JDM Joe. He has a CRX that's recently been case swapped with a bunch of GoFast goodies. He wants to give a shout out to Tom and Francisco for swapping his CRX. 
So go check them out on Instagram and show your support. I'll be giving shout outs to others who are building CRXs in my future videos. Just follow me on Instagram and get in touch with me and you could potentially have your car in one of my videos. I'll have all of the links in the description. With that being said, I appreciate all of you guys watching and I'll catch you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video.